All right, so we're going to be bringing Songhammer on here in just a little bit, okay? We're going to have, uh, have those guys, at least one of those guys over here. I think there might be two, so it'll be cool. But let's go ahead and play their video, man. You know, it's one of my favorite uh, tunes these last couple weeks since I started hearing it, man. It's, it's super addicting. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and get that pulled up for you guys. But uh, we'll check out their video, and then we'll, he we'll hear from them, uh, see what they got going on. It looks like with all the new ads that we have to the main guild, we may be able to do a tier 7 at some point. Little whore babies, you must be trolling. Yeah, man, I can't believe these guys think they're on our level. You got to do it smart when you're picking out your race. But like a demigod in stereo, we punch you in the face. You think you're gonna drop in beat? We're gonna drop in fat guitar. We're gonna drop a load on top of you and whisper. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Shredhammer's in the house. All right, just so you guys know, okay, you just watched, they just watched the video. We just played the video for them, uh, the Horde versus Alliance video. So Shredhammer is the is the is the major bald one, right? The major yes, bald I'm one with the little oh. uh, antennas on his forehead. Yeah, he's got the, horns. <laughs> yeah, the little horns. That's awesome. You know, you gotta you gotta be bold, and haircuts don't lie. So you know, you gotta you gotta be true. <laughs> Yeah, well, it was it was pretty clever how those guys uh, put that in the rap. They put that. It was, it was pretty funny. Yes, they uh, they were they were ruthless. In fact, you know, there's one method of thinking is that maybe the alliance won that rap battle because they dissed us pretty hard. Yeah, they did a pretty good job. Now, how did you hook up with those guys? How did you meet them? Uh, we, we, yeah, I think ahead. we. Yeah, I think we did a um, a Craigslist ad actually, and. Uh, we had had looked for different people, and we got a few people that responded. And I think we ended up. How did we end up actually finding those two? Well, as I recall, it was something. It was a Craigslist ad that was something like energetic, bald, white geek rocker seeks epic, <laughs> epic geek rapper for four man PvP Warcraft style. Is that right? Something like that. <laughs> nice. Uh, no, we did. We hooked up with them uh, through an ad, actually, and we went. You know, auditioning rappers was uh, a unique experience. We went through quite a few that, that didn't make the cut, and those two guys did not apply together. Um, Old Man yeah. Saxon and, and Isaac Lucas Obi One were uh, were both separate candidates, and because their styles were so different, like if you listen to Old Man Saxon, he's got like this slow kind of mellow flow and he's a really funny dude and then isaac lucas that that guy is just so fast that uh, we thought well we're a team it, they would make a good team so we put them together and did some tracking and uh and loved working with both of them in fact old man saxon went to uh, europe with us when we represented blizzard at gamescom nice well that's pretty cool man that you found them from from just an ad like on craigslist that's pretty interesting so how, how did you how did you guys um how did you interview them or whatever did you did you meet up somewhere and then you just had them kind of perform freestyle or or did you already have some stuff written for them or did they write all their own stuff what we did was we uh we drove out we did we kind of had a an impromptu audition at a starbucks we drove out <laughs> Nice. We went to USC, and uh, which is where Isaac was going to school, and so we we went and we met him right off of campus. And um, old man Saxon drove out and met us that day as well. And we basically um, talked to them about the song. We I think we had sent them some pre-production of the song at that point, and they listened to it. And we had already sent them some lyrical ideas. And so they kind of went from that point on, and it, like uh, like Kroonhammer there said, it was uh, it was very it was cool working with these cats who had not worked with each other before, but they were going to be a team, and they actually became buddies, and it, it was very cool. Two guys who wouldn't have have maybe ever met each other ended up you know really digging each other's company, and also became a cool rap duo. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, to kind of piggyback off that, that's kind of how the, the lordscunt.com community is, man. I mean, we you know we brought gamers from all over together as well, all over the world. And, and some of the people, especially some some guys in Europe, um, were only a couple towns away from each other. So they ended up meeting up. You know, same thing. If they, you know, if they never would have came into this community, they never would have met each other and, you know, build, out, build those friendships. So that's really cool. Now, speaking of that, how did you guys meet? How did uh, how did Kroonhammer and Shredhammer get together to do this thing? Well, uh, yeah, college exactly. A long time ago, it was a mini class. What college? Yeah, we were we were taking it. Uh, we were taking uh, a computer MIDI recording class at Riverside Community College in Riverside, California, and we uh, we had both signed up for for this class. And I think uh, I think that we were both in bands, separate bands at the time, and. Uh, the bands that we were both a part of ended up playing gigs together for, you know, almost a decade or more. So we knew each other through that, but we had never worked together until 2011 when we won the uh, music competition at BlizzCon for original song. Yep, that's correct. 
Wow, that's pretty cool. So you guys have been, I'm assuming you've been playing together for a long time, but you also been gaming together for a long time? Yeah, you know, ben, Ben's heavier on the, uh, Shredhammer is heavier on the lore. He, uh, he's a he's a lore hound. He, he can, you know, he's the one who we go to for our references. If I need to know how Illidan feels about something, he'll, he'll tell me. I just All know what feelings. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how Illidan feels. I just know what his blood looks like. <laughs> well, and, uh, I, I'm. Uh, it's interesting because everybody in the band has like a different l- level of expertise in something geek, and so mine uh, is that I am a, I'm an insane closet something. comic head, and also I love love like fantasy and sci-fi reading and books, and so that's kind of like my level of expertise. I still play games, you know, and and I'm I'm gaming, but not anything like like uh, Croon Hammer or even Death Hammer, our guitar player. He's a, he's a huge Call of Duty fan and, and he's uh, yeah, he's very active playing as well, but we all do, you know, uh, certainly writing for Blizzard and other, other companies as well, doing some epic music for their games. Yeah. I, I got a, the first PC game that ever really, you know, we had talked about this before. I, I told you my first system was an Atari 2600, but the first PC game that ever really got me cracked out was uh, Diablo. Diablo. Yeah. yeah, Diablo 2. Yeah, which was nuts. And then I went to Oblivion. And then uh, it's funny, I had a resistance to World of Warcraft for a long time because, you know, I, I knew so many people that played it and it looked so deep and intimidating. I was like, no, I, no I'm not going to do that. No. And then, uh, then I did it and boy, <laughs> just went totally over the top. But, our guild is kind of small right now because we're in between expansions, but it's usually around 900 players, and you know, and it's a big deal. And when this uh, the Star Wars thing, I, I found it through a, I think Facebook suggested it to me. Same yeah, thing, yeah. And it was, you know, I'm I'm really impressed because I've always I was once again resistant to um, iOS and mobile games until a couple of games that came out. Like I really enjoyed Infinity Blade when that when that came around. But when this thing came up, I tried it. I had been playing some Walking Dead thing, which I found mildly amusing. It wasn't like really thrilling me. And I started playing this and then I was just I just couldn't get enough of it. And I realized that EA did such a good job making this game deep. I mean for a for an iOS game it's really deep. So uh, my wife is now totally addicted to it as well. Well, that works out. Mm-hmm. Also, speaking of Warcraft expansions, uh, the next expansion coming out also is is Legion, and we're uh, Songhammer usually writes a, a song per expansion, so we're working on a song called Legion right now, and also a, another song for uh, for Diablo. Nice, nice. So tell everybody a little bit, kind of just introduce the community. Uh, I mean, we got viewers from. I think at last I looked, we had 174 countries that the live show has been viewed in. So a lot of people can't make the live show. They got to watch the replays, but, uh, but that's okay. You know, we can still give them this information. So tell them a little bit about uh, song hammer, kind of how you guys got started and what, what it is that, that you guys do uh, throughout the gaming. And, and like, I like to call it the nerd, the nerd, the cool nerd culture community. Yeah. It's the nerdosphere, you know? <laughs> there, yeah. I like that. Well, let's, let's yeah. start early then, Ben. I'll take them yeah. back to 2010 when, yes. Yeah. And, uh, okay, in 2010, I, I bought a BlizzCon ticket on my own because I was already an avid World of Warcraft player, and uh, I didn't have any friends, really, that did that. I mean, a couple. But um, I bought a ticket and went alone, and <clears throat> what I found is a lot like what you describe in this community is a lot of synergy. Like, I went by myself to this giant convention, you know, 40,000 people or whatever, but I just hung out with people the whole time and made new friends, and, and I saw the, um, during the like closing ceremonies, they always have the contest winners. And I saw the um, the category for song, and I thought, huh, I, I think we could, I think I think we could win that. So Ben and I were just buddies at the time. I, I went to uh, to him, and I didn't tell him that it was this giant, you know, international community, and that we'd be competing with the players, twelve million players that were eligible to enter the contest. I just said, hey, there's this thing that you know, it's like a uh, gaming and we could do some songs and we could win. And they said, oh, yeah, we think we win. Oh, yeah, you know, we'll win. We're going <laughs> to... And why don't you take it from there, man? Yeah, well, so what happens is 
uh, and again, I, I didn't know. I, I wasn't. I was gaming, you know, just doing console game stuff. So I didn't really know a lot about online multi, you know, multiplayer games. And so, uh, but we we started recording, and I had recently started. I had done an album, and I wrote a rock opera, and, and recorded it all at home. And so. Uh, we basically, we said, okay, well, let's just write a couple songs. You'll write one, I'll write one, and then we'll collaborate on the pieces together and then put them out separately. And so we did one for, for the Alliance called Armies of the Light. And then we did one for the Horde, of course, called We Are the Horde. And the song that ended up winning was was We Are the Horde. And we ended up, you know, the of course, BlizzCon, you know, gave us tickets to go to the convention and uh, we had prize money and all this well, we didn't even have a, a group name or a band name or anything. We were just a couple of dorks, as, you know, trying to win some money. And it turns out that uh, it it spawned a ton of interest. So by the time we hit boots on the ground at BlizzCon, we had track jackets with song hammer on the back of it and a big orc on the back. And we were we were basically marketing from day one when we got on there. And we had this album or this these songs that had, you know, a full band, full orchestration, all this, but we only had two members. <laughs> and so that was 2011, 2013, which is the next BlizzCon rolls around. And they had a, a song competition or not a song competition. They had a, their first ever talent competition. So we entered that and we won the talent competition in 2013. So 2014 rolls around and we contacted Blizzard and said, look, either you're going to hire us or we're just going to keep winning your competitions. Well, so they that, hired us. Yeah. <laughs> but 2013, just to give the depth of, of what it yeah. was, the, um, the direct TV for that. So there were about 25,000 people in the live audience, but the direct TV audience for that performance, which was our first performance. First as a ever band. performance. Yeah. So our first show ever was in front of 25,000 human beings standing in front of us and another 850,000 viewers in 150 countries. It was pretty enormous. Yeah, no pressure there, huh? Yeah, and then like Tread Hammer said, the 2014, um, we got to play with this band. It was this this little band. That They're a garage oh, band. Yeah, it's just a small band. Probably very few people know them. What's, what's the name of that band again? I think it's called Metallica. Right. <laughs> Those guys. Yeah. So, uh, although we had no access to Metallica, it's funny. People are like, well, you got to play at the same convention with Metallica. And we're like, yeah, but they had their own world. Even the Blizzard employees were like, we got to smell. We almost smelled them. They walked by, but yeah. they were warded off in their own zone. <laughs> we didn't get to touch them except for that our feet were on the same place on the stage. But that's right. <laughs> so they just still, so what they just kind of popped in and, and then uh, did their did their gig and then popped out. Well, that's they had cool. they had an army, you know. They they uh, <laughs> when Metallica rolls, they have you know their own stage management and their own crew and their you know. I mean, it's it's pretty incredible except that they have all that but then you know you have blizzcon so they have this huge stage set up and they have giant screens and you know all jumbotrons and you know just incredible lighting great sound and so it's you know it's really one of the best shows you could imagine seeing and yeah uh, it's uh it's a surreal you know experience to be getting to play and that was the 10th anniversary of the world of warcraft and so they hired us to do a special show where we uh, we kind of like premiered uh, a few songs that we had written, including the the song War, which we performed, and uh, it, which is what you guys just did the video for, and it, it was amazing. Now, did the did the rap guys come with you to that show, or was it just you guys? No, we had them come. It, it was great. They did. Uh, they they came up, and you know they were wearing their alliance gear, and uh, it was it was a rap battle royale. Yeah, there, the the stage was slippery with blood when it was all done. What was their reaction to to playing on a show that size? And I mean, to know that they got the viewership of all the direct TV and whatnot. I think they, they, they it's it's not it's you know it, music is such a rough industry, particularly now because everything is digital and, and people have this expectation of everything being free um 
most artists don't get to do shows that are that big until they're Metallica. And so they were, they were pretty blown away and, uh, and loved it. And then, uh, the, the blizzard saga continued and that was, so 2011 was winning the competition and we started the project to do that. 2013 was winning the talent competition. They hired us and that's the show we're talking about for 2014. And then in 2015, Blizzard uh, flew us to Germany, and we played Gamescom, which is the largest video game convention in the world, 350,000 people. And uh, that was just the next level. <laughs> wow. So was it just you guys playing, or was there a lot of other bands playing that day as well? Uh, video Games Live is a symphony orchestra that performs all the symphonic pieces to to whatever it might be and they did all blizzard game stuff and so they brought out um what orchestra was it uh, budapest symphony mm -hmm. yeah they're, they're amazing if you haven't seen video games live definitely youtube them they're pretty incredible it's all the all your favorite video game songs done by an orchestra in real time and it's just fantastic to behold oh wow yeah i'll have to check that one out for sure so, so, so you guys did, so you guys got to go to Germany. Now, what other countries did you guys get to travel to? Any other countries? Not as Songhammer. That's the first uh, international waylay that we've made, but we're currently the, one of the management companies we're working with now is global. So they've talked about Jakarta and, you know, um, Dubai. And it, the, the thing is we, we particularly play at um, comic type conventions and fantasy and gaming, anything that is, geek related so that stuff is now everywhere it's not like you know you and i were discussing that before nerd culture is not a subculture anymore if you look at you know, like civil war i mean it's the most important film out there right now and that's what happens all of the marvel movies are huge all the star wars movies are huge geek culture is is pop culture is mainstream culture now so it's no longer a subculture what that means is that these for us these performance opportunities are now all over the world yeah, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, I, I knew when I first saw your guys' website and saw your video production, you know, just of the videos you guys have done, I mean, I knew you guys were, were definitely on the right track. I mean, that's that's what's hot right now. That's what's big. I mean, that's accepted everywhere. Um, you know, I mean, uh, uh, even my daughter, you know, she watched the Supergirl with me, you know, which is amazing. I mean, now they got these these comic book shows. Now we're on TV that anybody can watch, and they're, they're good for all ages. And uh, she said that in her class, uh, her teacher asked how many people watched the new Super, Supergirl show when it first came out. And, you know, almost every kid in the class raised their hand, you know, so that's pretty cool. Um, you know, the way, the way that all this stuff's coming about. And like you said, Civil War, and they just had Batman versus Superman and all that. So, yeah, it's, that's, it's pretty amazing. Well, I'll even tell it. I mean, all the all the biggest television shows are kind of the same thing. At least yeah, yeah. Game of Thrones, Daredevil, Walking Dead. Yeah, yeah, Walking Dead. Well, and we're writing music, you know, that's that's pushing all of those boundaries. Uh, on the new album, uh, Take a Ride on My Spaceship, we have two Game of Thrones songs. One's called Ironborn. The other is called Northman. And then we have uh, we have a zombie apocalypse song called You Shoot I'll Drive and we have, you know, we're, we're literally, and we just got out of the studio about uh, two months ago with a Star Wars piece called Kill the Jedi. So we're, you know, all of those things that are being referenced in, in the pop culture, you know, needs some epic rock to go along with it. And, and something that Dustin Kroonhammer said earlier was that uh, it's really tough for a musician to, you know, play the kind of shows that we're getting to play, but also to make money and make a living doing original music. And and we're not doing parodies and we're not doing covers. We're actually creating original music. And that's almost unheard of for a rock band, uh, you know, other than Linkin Park or, you know, Metallica. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. <clears throat> Yeah, well, that was I, when, if, when I heard that first song, man. When I heard that war, you know, the Alliance versus the Horde song. I mean, I was just hooked, man. You guys got, you guys got, uh, you know, good musicianship. The the rap was good. The rock was good. I mean, you just uh, melded it all beautifully together. I, it was just pretty amazing. And I know that uh, that a few of the people last week that watched the live show, we do a promo. And we gave away two of your albums or two of your album download codes to different uh, members. Yeah that watched and, and they really enjoyed it. And that, that we're going to do two more uh, tonight. So if you haven't done so right now, we're online with, uh, with Songhammer. Um, we got Kroonhammer on here. 
who, who has offered to give us two more uh, album download codes for their new album, uh, Take a Ride on My Spaceship. So if you haven't done so, head over to lordskunt.com, click on promo, and just get in for that. We're going to give that away later tonight. Uh, but that's pretty amazing, man, what you guys have done. And, and I appreciate you guys contacting me. I don't know how it all came about or how we ended up hooking up together. But, um, you know, once I saw the website, I was hooked for sure. Well, I can tell you that how, how it came about was that I obviously love Galaxy of Heroes. And by the way, here, here I'll make an announcement that we've never announced anywhere in the world. So you've got something special to refer to for this episode. I, I'm not sure if even Treadhammer knows this, but uh, we're already working on a uh, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes song. Nice. <laughs> it might be oh, a year. That's before, awesome. But there, there's, there at some point will be a Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes song, Hammer song. That's amazing. And don't forget, we still need that lordskunk.com uh, intro. We need that theme song, man. Got to get that theme yeah. song going. Uh, hey, absolutely. Yeah, that'll be I cool. I like that. Yeah, that'll be so cool. So the way that I found you guys was... Uh, I was doing research because, you know, when they added guilds, there was all this stuff to figure out, like, immediately. And when I looked around, there isn't a lot of content out there for help with this game. You guys are kind of one of the only places to go and certainly the most organized. So I ended up on one of your blogs. Um, I think you had posted some of EA Jesse's stuff regarding you know, how the, how the guild stuff was going to work and, and what to do. And, uh, and so that's where I found you guys. And I just kind of followed the rabbit trail. And I think it took me to Discord. You had mentioned it somewhere. And, I you know, I still barely know how to use it. But I really love it. It's really amazing. Yeah, the voice chat is, is feature is really nice. That's what we're using right now for the for the live shows, the voice chat. And it, it made sense for us because, um, you know, at the time when we switched to Discord, I think we had probably like, 40 people maybe at the most in this line app chat that we were using. Um, and somebody had recommended a couple times on the show, uh, Redemption Wings uh, had recommended that we check out Discord. And, and I kept kind of putting it off. And finally, the third time he said, you know, you got to check this thing out. I checked it out. And I'm like, wow. I'm like, you know, we're, we're not outgrowing line app yet. We only have 40 people. I think you have 200 in, in line app. But I said, man, the future growth, the long term growth, you know, if we're looking, you know, six months, a year down the road, you know, you can have thousands of people in, in Discord. So I said, that might be a, that might be a good move. Now, less than a month later, it'll be a month on the 12th of this month. It'll be one month that we had Discord. Um, we're already over like 1,300 members in Discord. So I guess it was a really good move <laughs> in that regard. So, you know, we got the voice channels. We got multiple chat channels. So you know, people can share their, their rosters and screenshots and, and videos and all that good stuff. So actually, if you go to our Discord and type in exclamation point song hammer, all one word lowercase, it will pop up their video. So you can watch that. Rock out to song hammer any time that you want. Um, <laughs> Yeah, on the lordskunt.com Discord, so it's pretty cool. Uh, if you guys don't mind, let's, uh, I wouldn't mind playing another video uh, for everybody, kind of yeah. get them another introduction. What one do you guys recommend? I'm on your channel right now. Probably Death is on the way. Yeah, do it. Yeah, that's great. A little uh, history about Death is on the way. I think that over two days, we had about 100 people working on this video, and it was just, it was like creating a small independent film. Yeah, yeah. Well, let them watch the video and then we'll tell them yeah, some more yeah. about it. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I pulled it up, so we're going to start now. You guys won't hear it on because you're on the live show, but uh, but the viewers will. Dead of night, we fight in the pale moonlight. We fight, no end in sight, and death is on the way. We fight in the dragon's keep. We fight in the dungeons deep. We fight through the hours of sleep, and death is on the way. Dragon's Bane We fight though our friends are slain And death 
the trumpet's blast We fight when all hope is past We fight though our die is cast And death is on the way yeah. Death, oh death Don't come for me today Death That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Woo-hoo! You guys had horses. You guys had it. Here's what you need more of. Do you need more of that mage? Can you get more of that mage? <laughs> that, that mage is uh, Michelle Boyd, who was uh, on the Guild and, you know, who you can actually see in all kinds of she cameos and television shows all the time. But she's, uh, she's pretty awesome and a uh, diehard Songhammer fan at this point. Yeah, that's cool. How did you meet her? You just met her through the guild, or did you guys know her before that? Uh, what the what we did was um, we had been looking for someone to play a part like that, and we talked to a few different. Uh, it was actually our uh, the producer Cindy Rice. Uh, she helped us to look for some different actresses for a role like that. And she helped us to find Michelle, and it was a perfect fit. We had looked at a couple different people, and she was also in our price range at the time, and so it uh, everything worked. And you know, Michelle is awesome. She was also a part of uh, Team Unicorn and a few other things. So there was all all these different connections. Yeah, that's really cool. That was cool. So how did how did you guys come up with like the horses and all that? I mean, that's pretty that's a pretty big production. Yeah, does does it. Yeah, and actually, uh, Michelle wasn't in our price range. She's such a diehard geek that uh, what she had told me was she loves uh, she loves people that make their own geek media. And when she got the thing across, we didn't even come close to what her fee needed to be, but she came out and did it anyway. Yeah, she, that is true. The, the horses, um, once again, the, that video was such a giant logistics, you know, it was a huge amount of... of uh, logistics we really called i don't know maybe 50 ranches and um the group that we ended up working with was like sheriff's posse 
So they were all very experienced writers, and as a result, we got to do some really crazy horse stuff. That was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. The uh, the the we were looking for places that would be again cheap or or free to do the horse chase, and we were get here getting quotes for like a thousand dollars or this or that. So the these guys um, they actually said, okay, well, yes, you can. We we'll let you do it. You can shoot your video here, but we have one requirement, and that's that we want you know nine of our riders to be in in the video. And we're like, awesome, sold. Yeah, you got extras uh, out of it for free too. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Now, who yeah, are the would... who are the dancer guys? Now, were those guys that you knew, or were those just extras? Go ahead. <laughs> oh, the, they were. Um, so again. <laughs> You know, at first it was just like this little story, and every time we we would talk to somebody else or or we were looking for another location, the the production value of the video got bigger and bigger. Those dancers were from uh, was it Chafee College? Yeah, we went to the um, dance program for Chafee College because we thought you know it's cool to like. We're, we're kind of about an hour east of Los Angeles, and so you know, out in LA there are a lot more opportunities, but there aren't that many things. I mean, there are a lot of talented people out here, but there's not, there aren't the same volume of opportunities. So we thought we might as well work with like a local college and, and work with some students, A, because we were really poor at the time, you know. <laughs> but Very. yeah, but we, we found these guys that were doing this stuff. And I mean, you know, so those guys could do backflips and make hand gestures in the air at the same time. It was crazy, man. They were just so skilled. Well, and they're, um, it, the head of their dance department actually kind of commandeered them to do, and they helped to write the dance choreography because we were like, we should dance it out, like some kind of Bollywood movie, you know, some kind of awesome thing. And and so they literally wrote the choreography, had us come in. We had to learn the, the choreography with them uh, three different times over at the college, and uh, it was pretty awesome. Yeah, it's a yeah. cool video. Now, I see you got the same armor now. Is that the armor you guys pretty much wear at all the shows? Oh, yeah. When the uh, when we designed the armor, um, it was we let, we let him know that we needed it to be something that we could both perform and fight in because, you know, as you can see, we do need to fight. Sometimes you're out there in the wilderness and you run into death and it gives you a look and you can't just let it go. You know what I mean? And, and actually, one of the requirements was we had to be able to sit a horse. You know, we had to be able to ride a horse in the stuff. So the armorsmith, he was like, wow, th this is a lot. Okay. And, but he designed some stuff that was incredibly durable. And, yeah, we, we rock that armor every time we're on stage. Whenever we're at a c convention, we're, we're, we're up armored and we're walking around. And, it, I mean, that stuff is it's serious, you know, but at the same time, it's flexible enough that we can perform in it. Yeah, that's cool. What's it made out of? Leather. Leather? Yeah, leather. Oh, wow. Leather and metal. Wow, that's, that's right. cool. That's cool. Just like us, leather and metal. <laughs> that's right. I love it. I love it. So um, so how many music videos of that caliber, for our people that, that haven't checked out the channel yet, maybe they're just getting introduced to you guys, how many uh, production videos do you have that they could go and check out? There are three production videos. The third one is Better Off Dead, and we did that with a um, world-renowned machinimist named Baron Sustant, which uh, if any of your fans that are into machinima will probably know him. He's, he's a big shot. His stuff gets like a million views plus. But um, there are three that are full production, and we also have The Adventures of Slow Gamer, which is like another 20-some-odd of those where we're just – you know, out yep. in the world. Yeah, I saw some acoustic yeah. stuff you guys did. Looks like you're maybe playing a show somewhere. I saw those. Yeah, there, there's um, on the Adventures of Songhammer, we actually have, it's like miniature rock videos. So we, we wanted to, uh, we filmed at a bunch of different locations. Um, some of it was at BlizzCon. Some of it was at some, uh, I think one was uh, Stan Lee Kamikaze Expo. There was a, just a few different gigs that we brought a crew out to. And they filmed live stuff, and so we ended up making these snippets, basically like one and a half minute long rock videos for more than a half dozen songs. So as well as kind of skits and interviews and some you know wacky stuff that we do in there, they can also see chunks of songs 
that that are like miniature rock videos all in the Adventures of Songhammer. You guys actually got to play on the same stage as Metallica, right? Oh yeah, that was uh, yeah. the funny thing is we didn't know they. Um, <laughs> That's true. They, they notoriously don't announce that band until you know, like the headliner. Until we, like, is it? Sometimes it's like two days before. No, the headliner they announced like two weeks beforehand. They didn't announce us till a couple of days before. That was yeah, yeah. That, that, <laughs> we never we don't have a lot of time to promote, but you know they do a good job promoting. So it yeah. was uh, pretty awesome. But no, they uh, when they booked us, it was before they had booked Metallica. So it's like, oh yeah, you know we're, we knew it would be somebody that was big. They always have a great bands play. I mean, they've had Ozzy, Foo Fighters, Jack Lincoln Black, Park last year. Lincoln Park. Uh, they had Blake one year. So. Um, yeah, you know, we we didn't know it was it was a huge surprise. They announced that Metallica. The funny thing is, we found out with everybody else. I saw the uh, the the post, the Blizzard post. I was like, holy crap! <laughs> now you guys have uh, met was... them before, though. You guys have met Metallica though before, outside of this event, right? I am. Um, I interviewed Lars Ulrich had a record label um, oh, yeah. back in the '90s, and I interviewed a few of the bands that he did. So I got to talk with him about those things. Yeah, that's cool. That must have been really cool, man. I mean, did you guys get to see them, like, you know, backstage and stuff? No, we, we were pretty separated. Like we said, even the Blizzard staff wasn't allowed to kind of talk with them. And that's true. A lot of times they have, like, a huge headliner at some of those events. Um, it's it's tough because they have, in a lot of time those bands in their rider have, you know, a uh, don't bug me clause because they're getting into the show and they're kind of getting in their headspace and the whole deal. And so, I mean, it, it would be, it would be wonderful if, you know, if bands at our level could, you know, be able to really focus that way. But we're, usually we're wearing so many hats that we just can't, you know, because <laughs> we're managing ourselves and, you know, promoting ourselves and doing all that work. And so we, uh, we don't have the minions they do. Yeah. I think, I figured they, they probably treat you guys like fans backstage too. Yeah, well, when when it's a big band like that, you know, occasionally there, you know, there's more access, you know, but uh, but for Metallica, there just wasn't. And uh, but but that's, you know, it's all right. You know, we still got to be there, rock, you know, the same event with them and also, you know, experience what you get to experience at BlizzCon, which is, you know, 25,000 amazing screaming people who are just over the moon excited to be there and you know you have so much in common and it's just an awesome experience it's got to be so cool man well blizzard's been good to us we like them and uh, we're really digging this ea stuff in the in the near future we talked to them a little bit in uh, germany i think they were i think they were pushing it at the time pushing what you broke up there pushing what uh, they yeah, were pushing man. yeah and, also, and they were uh, yeah, they were prepping for Battlefront for the next uh, big push for Battlefront. They had a full ATAT, and they had uh, like a uh, Tie Fighter and and a Speeder that you could get in at BlizzCon, it, or not BlizzCon, at Gamescom in Germany. It was pretty rad. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty yeah. cool. That's really cool. Now, what are you guys working on now? You were telling me a little bit about a movie. We talked about that uh, when when I was talking about you guys last week on the live show. Um, you guys are doing a movie over at Sony Pictures, right? We're uh, we are working on a Sony film. We can't be too specific, but what I can tell you is it's a it'll be distributed by Sony and it's got uh, Danny Trejo and uh, Brian Austin Green and BBC in it. Nice. And yes, we're we're doing the score for that, and also we're doing the score for another another movie called Let's Suck at Jones, which is uh, uh, he's a vampire slash monster hunter from the '70s with big afro. And a hot sidekick, and it's totally geeky. Uh, I'll hook you guys up with them. They they would love to uh, talk to your audience as well. They're a lot of fun. And, and in fact, the uh, director of photography, the guy who's the cinematographer, is in our uh, Galaxy of Heroes Guild. He's he's our level seventy four that just puts everyone else's DPS to shame. Nice, nice. And uh, the if people want to hear the the title track. For that movie, Bloodsucker Jones, the it's a sequel actually. It's called Bloodsucker Jones versus the Creeping Death, and 
we wrote a song called Bloodsucker Jones, and it's on our uh, our new album that's out right now. So if anybody you know searches Songhammer, you know at cdbaby.com or Songhammer on iTunes, they can click onto our library and uh, and hear that right now. Yeah, yeah we had you, what, we had a couple of members. Guys, uh, oh, go ahead, Remont. I was going to ask what their PVP teams were. You mean in our uh, Galaxy of Heroes? Yeah. Uh, what my PVP team is uh, Sidious. Well, it, it changes depending a little bit, but it's Sidious, Old Daka, Chewbacca. Um, Chewbacca! <laughs> yeah. Uh, Luminaria and a Jedi Consular. You can tell he's free to play. Yeah. Well, I just, I, you know, I haven't gotten as deep. I've spent a little bit of money. I, I've, I, um, I've probably spent... I want to say my wife started playing too, so we're kind of careful, but we've still spent probably 50 bucks a piece or something. Now, you were telling me, how how out of control does that get? What's like, how much do people spend? Well, let's give an example of one of our favorite guests, Yo-Yo Yoda. I mean, his roster, <laughs> he has every character, every character unlocked. They're all at seven star, except for Vader, of course, um, and they are all level 80. So just imagine the math on that. Wow. Yeah, it's hard to imagine. I know. I know what you know. And, and crystals aren't cheap. <laughs> no, no. There, there's some people. There's some people who have easily spent like fifteen to twenty thousand on this game. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. He loves well, those. He loves those guys. Well, yeah, we're just poor rock musicians. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm glad those guys exist so that EA can afford to make all this great content for me to play for my fifty bucks. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> there's, no, there's nothing wrong with that. And you know what's funny is that. Um, you know, when, when you look at it, when you actually look, come down to, to looking at how you can progress, I mean, for the most part, a free-to-play player can, can compete. I mean, you know, semi, semi free-to-play player can compete for the most part. You know, uh, now they're not going to be able to do like uh, the guild that we're referencing that Yoda's Yoda in his Team Instinct. And if you look on the leaderboards right now, uh, let me pull it up. You know, they are, they are number one on the leaderboards, and they, are, they have 400 raid points, okay, for the leaderboards. Number two in the world is uh, another guild called 808 MSK 808. I, I never heard of them before, but they're at uh, 280 raid points. So if that gives you any point of reference of, uh, in this game, they call Big Spenders whales. And uh, if you, that's any frame of reference of how many people they have in their guild that are like that, you know, that have those deep, deep, deep rosters that are able to pump out, uh, you know, heavy damage on the raid and, and complete those raids quickly like they're doing. Um, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool to see it. Um, not a lot of people can see it. So it's nice to have uh, Yo Yoda on. And, and actually the guy who does our, um, our top 10, who's going to do our top 10 for this week. He did it last week as well. His name's Wise Man Pendle. He's also from Team Instinct. Um, so they always bring great knowledge over to Discord, uh, bring great knowledge to the community. So I always appreciate those guys uh, sharing that sharing that information with everybody. Well, yeah, and, uh, and once again, I love the game, but, you know, we're still, I mean, relatively inexperienced. It's kind of it's kind of a new universe for us, and I'm digging it, but I, I, uh, I tune into this stuff because I need more information. I we're not at a point where we're competitive yet. We're kind of like, uh, we're, we're the ca we're the one casual team Scott Guild. <laughs> <laughs> but we welcome, we welcome you guys with open arms, man. You guys are cool. So. Yeah. Well, we're having fun. And once we, once you know, we've got a little bug that we're dealing with that, uh, I've been back and forth with DA about some, some guild rosters show up as full when they're not. And I think it's just a, from what I'm told, it's a developer issue that they're working on that they'll sort out. But, uh, but uh, once they do, we, you know, we've got room for another 25 people. And that's cool because, you know, you guys are all kind of high-end progressors. And uh, and it's good to have a, a spawning pool to take new talent from. You know, maybe we can help develop those players and, and bring you guys uh, roster additions as you need them. Absolutely. And yeah, that's the cool thing about when, when we started this. And, and I don't know if you guys know, um, I don't know if you guys kind of know the story about the guilds, but... Uh, for guilds in, in Galaxy of Heroes, you know, for, for us that play World of Warcraft and games like that, you know, I've been gaming in guilds since, geez, the late 90s. 
Um, you know, and, and I know you guys have very experienced that as well, but there's a lot of people that play this game that didn't understand guilds. They didn't know about them. They didn't know how they worked. They'd never been in a guild. And I thought, well, hey, you know what? I'll announce on a live show that we'll do guilds for everybody. Everybody that wants to be in a guild that watches the show is part of the lordscope.com community. You know, we'll find you a guild. We'll work it all out. Now, I thought maybe, maybe we'd have like three guilds is what I thought. I thought maybe we'd have to put together maybe like two and then have a half guild, you know, kind of to fill out, um, recruit for and stuff. We ended up with uh, 600 people, so 50 people in a guild. So over 600 people registered to be in a guild. So, boy, it was a nightmare. We launched with 12 guilds. I think we're sitting at 18 guilds right now. Uh, I think you guys were our 18th guild or 17th guild, something like that. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it was crazy. We were not expecting that. It, it far exceeded my expectations. But, yeah, putting everybody together and, and kind of um, getting them acclimated to guilds and, and putting them all was, was pretty cool, man. It was a fun experience. Grand Patron helped out a lot. Uh, Remon helped. And a lot of other members in, in you know, the Team Skunk leadership helped out. So it's pretty cool to, to see it all together and have them all in there now and, and see people progressing. Uh, it's really nice. I think for a while, in the very beginning, we had 10 – Team Skunk guilds on the top leaderboards. So 200, the top 200 guilds in the world, 10 of them were Team Skunk guilds. That's pretty cool. So that's great. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna continue pushing, pushing the progression, and and you know we'll help you guys get up there. And and, and we, if EA EA listens a lot to the live shows, the devs listen to a lot. Sometimes they'll come onto the live chat. But yeah, if you guys are listening, help Songhammer out, man. Help Songhammer out. Get uh, get their get their guild set up so they can get more people in, man. They're they're trying to bring new people to this community and in this game. Yeah, and the other way they can help Songhammer out is by buying some Songhammer music. Absolutely. <laughs> well, as I was saying earlier, some of our members were posted in uh, in Discord. They were showing the screenshots of them buying, you know, know your albums and songs awesome. off iTunes. So. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's pretty cool. Good. So if you don't win one of the album, two album downloads we're giving away tonight, make sure if you don't, even if you don't win, you can get up, go on over there and buy it. Now, what is it to buy the whole album on iTunes? It's not very much, is it? What is it? No, no, um, it's a it's a thirteen song album, and it's only uh, nine ninety nine. It's ten bucks on iTunes, and so, less on CD Baby. Yeah, yeah, it's less right now. We're running a sale on CD Baby, so if they just uh, if they go to um, cdbaby.com and, and search yeah, Songhammer, or they go to our website at songhammer.com, they can click through to the CD Baby page. And uh, yeah, we're running a, it's It's 20% off, 30% uh, on the download, 20% on the physical CD. And the physical CDs are cool because the new album, uh, the, both of them have really cool artwork, but the new album, we, we basically referenced all these old, like 1960s sci fi movies, like. Like uh, missing, you know, missing planet, and you know the monster from outer space, and all these crazy things. And we made our album; all, all the guts and the inside all look like these old movie posters. So it's really rad. Oh wow, that's cool! And it's it's twenty uh, percent off if you get the actual CD. Yes, yes. twenty percent on CD, thirty so, percent on the downloads. And so all you have to do, if you go to songhammer.com, you can click buy music. That'll take you over to our CD Baby store, and we've actually got. Two albums. Um, I'll get you the other one, for a copy for you. But the one that yeah. we're giving away is our new one, which is "Take a Ride on My Spaceship." We've also got the first record, which is "World of Songhammer." Well, mm -hmm. I would definitely recommend uh, to the viewers, and based on what you just said about the uh, the album art and stuff like that, is to get the actual physical copy. I mean, you know, for eight bucks, roughly eight bucks. I mean, you can't beat it, and uh, you know, you get all that cool artwork and. Uh, you know, obviously you could just burn that disc right onto your your iTunes anyway. So why down? You know, oh. Why get the download? Did I get the physical copy? That's cool. Yeah, and uh, the um, with a excellent cosplayer for for those of that are into cosplay, uh, Leanna Vamp, the vampress Leanna Vamp herself, is actually on the cover of the album uh, "Take a Ride on My Spaceship," and she's uh, extremely famous in the world of cosplay, and also just a sweet, awesome gal. And uh, so she's uh, she's on the cover along with us, flying our space. Uh, our space car. It's pretty rad. Well, it actually, um, it's very relevant because Leanna's in her uh, Mandalorian armor, I believe. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and, nice. Nice. That's yeah, cool. And on the, on, so on the back is another cosplayer, uh, Lori Bloom, who is uh, Miss Pirate Savvy, another yeah, pretty famous uh, cosplayer. Yeah. That's cool. Rep, repping the Star Wars. Nice. Well, that'll definitely, make, right. them, that'll definitely make the viewers buy it now. They definitely got to get it now. That's yep. right. You got you got a you got a bounty hunter chick in Mandalorian armor. Enough said. They're in. That's right. Yeah. And she, she's pretty awesome. She's a she's a hard worker and an awesome chick, and of course she's stunningly beautiful. Well, now um, I'm, now, so, now I'm going to go buy the the hard copy now just because. Yeah, that's right. 
Uh, well, that's that's really cool, man. That's really cool. The success that you guys are having, and you're out there doing what you love. You know, and that's kind of what I do. You know, what I mean, I, I'm the same way, man. I, I there's a lot of things I've done professionally, and I'm sure as musicians, there's a lot of other uh, routes you could go or things that you could do. You know, I'm I'm obviously marketing and in in uh, sales and, and management and things of that nature. So that's my background. That's my forte. But this this right here, being able to interact with the community and do this, this is a, this is a labor of love for me, and I can tell it's a labor of love for you guys. You know, to mix the cosplay and the the geek culture. You know, together with the music, I mean, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, it, it's where our passions. You know, we. It's funny because uh, both Dustin and I, for years and years, you know, we worked on what we would consider very serious projects musically, and it wasn't until we let all that go and let you know all of our true interests, which is the geek and the you know all those uh, the things that really make us excited. You know, we put that into the music and. What do you know? It was more fun for us, but it was also more fun for everybody else. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And then, like you guys, I mean, one of the things I really appreciate about your your stuff, I'm looking at your Discord chat, and it says, "Please keep all communication and media shared clean and safe." We we have the same thing. Like, there's nothing. Uh, we're we're careful to make sure we can appeal to all audiences, and it's cool for everybody to listen because we've got fans that are like really old people, little kids, and it's all it's all good. Yeah, that's important, man. We we had uh, you know quite a few of our, our guests. You know, we we would allow people to come on to the show and they could ask questions. You know, to to the different panels that we'd have on here. Um, and we you know we had people nine year olds. We had a, a a dad that he was on with his two kids. You know, I think one was nine and one was eleven. And you know, we want to make sure that we can bring everybody on. Everybody can experience. That. I think we had another one you know, that would come on. His mom would help him kind of. You know, uh, when he was asked questions and stuff, he's a little nervous being on. But it's cool, man. We, you know, we have older older people. And again, like I said, I mean, we're viewed in over 174 countries. So, you know, some people, um, you know, certain cultures take offense to certain things, too. So we try to keep everything, you know, uh, PG, just like a Disney movie, basically. I mean, Disney is the, the parent company of the game we're playing, you know. Uh, yes. So it makes sense. And, and plus, you know, I mean, nobody wants to come on in a negative environment with a bunch of nonsense going on. You know, we, we pride ourselves on being a, a completely negative free zone. You know, uh, that, that's, that's our two rules, you know, keep it PG and, and no negativity, you know, come on, just have fun when you're spending time, uh, you know, with your hobby or your video game or being a part of the community, you know, we want it to be a fun experience for everybody. Uh, everybody can enjoy it and, and walk away when you walk away from it and go back to your family or whatever, you're not in a bad mood. You know, you're, you're, you've enjoyed yourself for a little bit you know, playing your game or, um, you know, checking out the, uh, the community here. That's excellent. And the, that's kind of Songhammer's motto is that, you know, you should, you should come, you should have a complete blast and your face should be melted when it's all over. So, and you know, that's, that's our, that's our creed. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know if Coonhammer ever told you, but this started, uh, I actually started this channel on February 19th of 2016. So we're about what, two and a half months, maybe three, coming up on coming up on three months two and a half months thereabouts and i literally just started this just to just to stream some of my gameplay of doing galactic wars and, and some of my pvp arena battles and stuff like that you know for this game and it grew into what it is today two and a half months later almost three months later you know it is what it is now so i mean we've came a long way and we're going to continue to grow and continue to do that and then meeting meeting awesome people like you guys makes it all worth it you know well we're here. I mean, we're we're playing and we're here, and, and you'll keep hearing from me even as a patron, just because I've got a, I need more information, man. This is the only place to get it. Yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate you guys uh, coming on, and I appreciate you referring other other people that you know, you know, that are big into uh, big into the geek community, you know, to come on as guests as well and uh, and spread their message. So I appreciate that. Oh man, and we so appreciate you taking the time to to spread the love and uh, to promote uh, some song hammer as well. We really, what we find, and this is one of the coolest things, is we when we go to conventions or when we get to you know connect with people that are so awesome like yourself, you know, like the Lord Skunk community. It's what we find is that you know people in the geek community they are so supportive of one another and they're so helpful to one another and. That's that's one of the things we love the most, and we can't thank you enough for you know helping to promote what we do as well. Yeah, absolutely, man. And I'll tell you what, I I was was telling uh, Kroonhammer, you know, we we talked previously in a week trying to get everything set up for the show, and uh, and I told him I I used to uh, be a part of a music I used to own a music venue, 
And, uh, oh. yeah, yeah. So I, you know, a lot of my promotion skills and stuff like that. And actually a lot of my online marketing was to, to, to promote my music venue. And with the music venue, I mean, we had a $0 ad budget, you know, we had MySpace. Yeah. This is back in the MySpace <laughs> days and MySpace, yeah, yeah. we killed it. We crushed it on MySpace. I mean, we were MySpace famous and uh, we had some awesome MySpace bands, you know, that were very popular on that. They were more underground. It was the whole scene back then, you know, that yeah. kind of metal core uh, stuff. But, uh, but yeah, so we, we, you know, we did that and that was really cool. Um, and that taught me a lot when I started doing this live show, I was like, well, man, this thing's starting to take off. It's starting to blow up. So I just started promoting it. Like I would promote the music venue, man. I just use all the different, uh, different mediums online, uh, to be able to, to build that. So that's how we built what we got today. And, and, you know, it all, it all kind of goes back to that, you know, uh, the, the music, uh, how, how do you promote being a musician, man? It's really tough. You know, what do you do? You go stand out in the corner, and hand out flyers. That doesn't work. You know, it doesn't Not work. Anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We all did that. Let me tell you. Oh yeah. Oh, yes. oh yeah. We, we used to go, we were all ages music venue. So in any, any oh, age could come primarily we were, you know, uh, high school, uh, young adult is what we do high school and college. And we would ju- I would send a team, uh, to all the schools and they would take, we print flyers about 50 bucks to print a thousand flyers, uh, black and white, two sided half page. And they would go mm-hmm. and they would flyer all the, um, the windshield wipers for the, for the student parking and all the different schools in the area. So that's how we got, that's how we started that. It was just a, a boots on the ground type deal. And, uh, and that's how we got a lot of our promotion out there. So yeah, I understand, man. I know how hard it is to promote and how difficult it is. And a lot of people bash me on that actually, uh, outside of the Lord's Skunk community, they bash me because they say I promote too much and this and that. Like, that's the best compliment you can give somebody, man. In my oh, shoes, yeah. that's the, be- tell me I promote too much. I appreciate somebody that tells me I promote too much, you know? Well, you know, it's interesting because in social media, people talk about, you know, oh, you're pestering me or you, you know, you're, you're putting your stuff out there too much. But the social media is, is the new flyering zone. You know, it's where we go out to flyer. And for us, the, on, the only other place that we can flyer because we perform at conventions and things like that is we actually go to conventions up armored and we give out um, we have we have free download cards that give one song. For download and uh, as just kind of a promotional gift and we go and we'll hand out you know 500 to a thousand of those things at a convention and take you know a thousand pictures with people and it's the new flyering you know it's the yeah. new but but where promotions are really happening now is online just like what you're talking about and that's 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 where we have to go and myspace was perfect for that you know in its day and there's uh, really nothing that that compares to what that was at this time. Yeah. Yeah. There really oh, isn't there really, and it's too bad that, that, you know, Facebook kind of took that over for the social media aspect of it, but for the bands, I mean, that was amazing for, I mean, these are, these are high school kids, you know, that, that put, put together a, you know, they, they do a demo somewhere, they put it on MySpace. The next thing you know, you know, it catches fire, you know, it just blows sure. up, man. And uh, you well, know, I booked an entire tour off of MySpace at one point. <laughs> yeah, well, you're absolutely right too. Doing doing shows, you know, being able to put up your, uh, you know, w- uh, putting up your your tours or you know where you're going to be playing at different gigs so people can come to them and all that. Yeah, I mean, MySpace was amazing for that. So it's unfortunate that 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 didn't quite work out, um, you know, the way that it was going for a while. Uh, and you know, may, maybe someday, who knows? I think Justin Timberlake owns that or something owns a piece of MySpace. So who knows? Maybe someday they'll resurrect that. They're trying to get it, but. It seems like now they're going all mainstream bands, which is, I think, the exact opposite of what they need to do. They need to go right back to, to, the, to the high school kids or, you know, the college kids that are trying to get music out there, um, you know, and get that stuff out, out and build that, sub, build that subculture back up. So, Well, and all titans fall. You know, what we, I think if we've learned anything from social media, it's that you invest in it and you work on it and you have your, your fingers in all those different pies, but it will fall. And when it does, something else is going to take its place. And you just have to be ready to evolve and change and move with it. Yep, absolutely. 100% for sure. Yeah. Well, speaking of uh, free promotion, so any of your listeners yeah. know who visit songhammer.com, uh, there is a free download, a free song download all the time. So hop on over there and that'll also take you to all of our social media portals, etc. And uh, we've got Facebook posts for this. So if, if somebody wants to see this this late, you you guys you can see this later, right? I mean, most of yep. your views are yeah. uh, yep. are not. Yeah, yeah. so you, we yeah, posted for, this on all of our social media as well. 
Friday nights are, are big shows for us, and it's typically on the replays because people, you know, people go out on Fridays and stuff. And, and you know, we're, we start this on East Coast time. So for you guys, it's we started at 5, 5 p.m., you know, for the West Coast. Um, so a lot yeah. of people watch the replay. They'll catch the end of it, and then they'll go back and watch the replays. But people from all over the world, you know, on different time zones than us. But, yeah, they, they watch those. And, and I think a lot of the – lot of the, some of the comments we get, you know, I can kind of guess this, that some people may go out and, and have, a, have a fun night, a fun adult, you know, night maybe out at, at the bar or somewhere. And then they come back, and the comments they leave, you can kind of tell they're a little, they're a little slurred, their comments. You know, <laughs> that, they, that they leave. They appreciate it. But, but yeah, so, so we get a, get a lot of late-night viewers, too, that, that will watch the replay. Uh, but yeah, man, it's uh, it's good, man. I, I can't believe it and how things can take off. Like you said on social media, uh, we did a live show, which we weren't even going to do. We weren't even going to do it. We, were, we just got done setting up all the guilds and all this stuff. We were just like literally burnt out, man. All of us were just burnt. We're like, you know what? Let's just do the live show, I guess. We'll just make it a quick one. You know, we'll get up. People are wanting to, people are, you know, asking us about it. So we did the live show. That, that ended up being went viral because it was about guilds and raids right when guilds and raids were coming out. I think that has like sitting at like 16,000 views right now. We did it last week. Um, yeah. So it's, it's pretty amazing how, you know, it's, if it's at the right place at the right time, um, you know, it'll take off. And that brought us a lot more viewers too, you know, brought a lot more people to the community. So, you know, it popped up on YouTube or whatever, for whatever reason, it, the, the metrics were right. The wording was right uh, for people to, to find it in the search results. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Well, it's been a pleasure, gentlemen, and, and we have to get back to our movie compositions, but uh, we'll stay in touch, and actually, I'll have to pull you over because I have a bunch more questions at some other point. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely, um, and, uh, and we'll, uh, hopefully, yeah, get that stuff figured out because Songhammer is recruiting, okay? They are part of the Team Skunk Guild, so go to teamskunk.com, uh, follow that information, but they will be recruiting. They just have a bug right now with their guild. Uh, they have, you guys have like 40-some members in it, right, when you really only have 20? We have 24, it says we have 49, and we don't. It's funny, because what, what happens, if anyone else has this bug, when you look under your guild management section, you'll only see the amount of people when you scroll down through the names that you actually have, but then when you look to the left where it says how many people you have, it says the higher number, and likewise, in the guild activities section near your dailies, it will show the names of a bunch of people that aren't in the guild, and I think there are people who you at one point send invites to, but there are no pending invites. So if you're having that issue at all, you're, you're not alone. There, are, uh, I did some research and found in the forums a bunch of other people that were having it, and it's something that they have not yet figured out how to address, apparently. Gotcha. Okay, well, we'll keep you guys posted as soon as that's available. And you can still head on over there. I know we have a few members that are already waiting, waiting to join uh, Songhammer in the, in the TeamScope.com community Discord. Uh, they're already waiting. They're just Hopefully that will get fixed soon, and then they can, they can join in. Uh, the guild, but yeah, absolutely. So they're, they're primarily more of a casual style uh, guild, probably right around the high 60s, low 70s, wouldn't you say? Yeah, most of them are. Yeah, it's right, right about. It's 60 to 74 right now, and it's that's about right. It's about an even split between the 60s, and we've got you know in, in 24 people, we've got I think five 70s, 74 being the highest, and the majority of them are 66 ish or something. So what we're looking for probably is anything north of 60 and, and we're casual, but we want people that'll be active and, and do, you know, farm coins that we need to do and participate in the raids. We're just not, we're not pressing for needing to be, you know, on the leaderboards. We just want to get our content done and farm our stuff. And then once again, maybe we can help you by developing some players that you can recruit out of, out of our uh, guild to help in some of the bigger guilds when they reach the point where they're ready. Yeah, absolutely. That just happened today. We had a couple come up from a couple of the lower guilds or not, I don't want to say lower guilds, but other guilds in the teamscunt.com community. And, uh, you know, they, they uh, got promoted up to, you know, the main guild. So that's cool. So we filled, a, we had a couple open slots. We filled them. We still got one or two open slots as well left. So if anybody out there not a part of the guilds wants to, wants to join, uh, go to teamscunt.com. But I appreciate uh, Shredhammer, Croonhammer on here. Make sure you guys Ooh. check out. Yeah, absolutely. Make sure you guys check out their website, Songhammer. And they've been asking if you would please, uh, they're trying to push their Facebook right now. Head over to Facebook uh, and search for Songhammer and give them a like. Yep, it's awesome. facebook.com forward slash songhammer. And uh, when we're done here, I'm going to email you the, those two download codes. So he's not lying, guys. You guys have the chance to win two, uh, well, two, two versions of two records that uh, he's going to give you away right now. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, we're going to do that a little bit later in the show. So uh, we'll get to that when we do the promos.